Ooh, what old chaps, I am Magical Mike, and this is Winter's Day. There's not a lot that changed since the years before, so if you want a full rundown of every little tiny thing there is to do, then check out my videos from previous years at the start of the playlist that I will link in the description of this video. But if you want to know what's different this year, then I'll go over that stuff, I'll talk about the new dailies and the login rewards, and sprinkle in whatever else comes to mind. Alright, I suppose the biggest change this year is where we're at. Obviously Lion's Arch is still in ruins and doesn't seem to be getting rebuilt anytime soon, despite hosting Halloween and having the time to put all those decorations up, but forget that. So Divinity's Reach is hosting Winter's Day this year. I thought this would be pretty cool to see the whole city in snow and all the decorations up everywhere, but unfortunately it's only the one district that got the decorations, so only about a sixth of the city looks different. It's a bit of a shame for what it's worth. That sixth of the city does look really nice though, and I can appreciate the density of all those decorations being stuffed in this area and it is quite cool to see. As a result of all this compacting, everything is stuck neatly together, it's all nice and close in that area. So you've got the jumping puzzle, the bell choir, toy apocalypse, the infinarium, the snowmen building with the magic snow, and the snowball fighting and the donation drive events. Most of these things have very subtle little changes as well. Hohotron is now a replica, for example. The jumping puzzle now doesn't give you the option to take the easy reward and finish about halfway through. It also forces you to wait on a lot of the collapsing snowflakes. Toypocalypse now throws you into pugs again instead of organised teams, which is good because hardly anyone actually wants to do it just for fun. They just want to get the achievements and do the 50 rounds and then go and never come back, and I can't blame them. I'm not a big fan of it either. And I'm sure there's some kind of minor changes to other things to smooth them all out as well, but I can't think of any of that stuff off the top of my head. Speaking of all of these activities, I'll say that my opinion of them hasn't really changed since 2012. I think they're still all really fun little distractions, and as long as you don't burn yourself out on trying to grind all of them for some reason, they will stay that way. If this is your first time seeing all this stuff, then I'd recommend checking it all out. And if it isn't, then I'd recommend going and checking it all out anyway, just maybe for not as long. If you want the meta achievement, you're going to have to check out everything anyway. Click on that meta and it will show you all of the objectives that you need to hit. For some reason, the Winter's Day daily achievements don't count towards the meta, and I'm not particularly keen on that, but they do still give you some wintry rewards and a laurel, which is nice because they're nice and easy. Repetitive, though, if you want to look at it that way. And after playing for so long now into Season 2 without these meta achievements, I can safely say that I do not miss them at all. Yeah, it's nice to have an overall reward for doing a bunch of stuff, but it's just much nicer to have just the region achievements, and then the challenge ones for the story. At first I was dubious about these changes to meta events when it was first announced, but yeah, I do actually like the new way of doing things much more now. There's also a couple of hidden achievements that you won't be able to see at, at a glance, and these are to do with a scavenger hunt and a collection. If you hop into your home instance, you'll find a Grawl that wants some food, and you'll find directions to the Bloodstone Dust Chef. Over a course of a couple of days, you'll, um, help the Grawl and unlock a collection. And if you finish that collection, which is pretty enjoyable to do actually, you'll get your own tree in your home instance that spawns a present every day. I did like doing that collection. I'll admit that I looked up which puzzles to go to and do because it was a bit vague, but at least I had real objectives to go and do and I had fun doing them for a while. During this, you'll also get these unique celestial statted rare accessories, which I'm not really sure what to do with because they aren't particularly useful to me. I don't know if I should salvage them or if I should just keep them. I'll probably end up salvaging them though, because they'll just take up inventory space that I don't need to waste. Speaking of inventory space getting wasted though, the one thing I will complain about this year is the amount of boxes that you get. Holy crap, you get a lot of boxes to open, which then give you boxes which open into more boxes, which contain bags, which have more boxes of bags in them. Yeah, it was silly, and then they patched it to be a, a little bit less silly, but it does still remain to be rather silly anyway. There's tons and tons of bags and boxes of bags and bags of boxes of blah, 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 blah. This, this reward system is really getting a bit silly. Tons of bags are not equal to feeling rewarded. I suppose the last thing to talk about is the new dailies and the login rewards then. Uh, the segues are real today, eh? I don't mind this change. I actually like it, in fact. I have literally no idea 
why people were so mad about it on Reddit, honestly. I have no clue why people were getting angry about it. You get a reward just for logging in each day, which slowly gets better and better over the course of four weeks, and then it resets. And let's clear this up right now. If you miss a day, your progress does not reset. It is saved. So you can happily miss a full week if you like and not log in for that amount of time and then log in the next day and pick up exactly where you left off with no progress lost. Are we clear now? Good. Alright, cool. And the rewards aren't bad either. You end up with about as many laurels as you would have in the old system, if not more. You get a bunch of other stuff as well, like tier 6 crafting materials and lower and mystic coins, some rare and exotic gear and skill points and level up tomes and all that sort of stuff. It's alright. <laughs> they do all come in bags though, which is worthy of yet another eye roll. The changes to the daily system are actually good too. They're fairly specific, but I do feel incentive to go and get them done. I've been doing the PvP dailies this week, and I really like how they give you specific rewards based on the content that you're actually playing. The PvE stuff is lacklustre though, I will admit that, and so is the Will v. World stuff really, if you're a big Will v. Worlder anyway. But the PvP track boosts are noticeable for me as a casual player. For only a couple of games, I can make a good chunk of progress on those reward tracks. And I've really nothing bad to say about that stuff. It's quite a nice little bonus thing to get. Oh, but I did just remember about the Winter's Day Rebreather though, the underwater helmet skin, because it is a reward from a PvP track. It looks interesting and that's why I'm going for it, but I really don't like how you can't unlock it as a skin. Just like the polyluminescent gem thingamies from Halloween. I feel like these things are circumventing the wardrobe system for some reason. Maybe it's to add value to the RNG or grind for them? I don't really know, but I do know that I don't particularly like that direction for that reward system. But, that's me done. I guess there's nothing really more to talk about unless I've missed a whole bunch of stuff, which I probably have, but never mind. I'm gonna go get a cup of tea and warm up again. I hope you guys have a good holiday, and I will see you guys next time. Ta-ra!